This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. I'm going to go through uh, question one from section B of the um, December 2014 paper F5 exam. So make sure you've got uh, the exam in front of you. Uh, and let's work through it. Um, oh, dear, 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 there we are. It's a good start. Um, look at the requirement first, always. And for part A, um, it, it required calculate the price which Cherco expects to charge for the new seat. Note the learning index, the 75% learning curve is minus 0.415 and of course <clears throat> it's fairly obvious the question is on uh, learning curves so let's see if we can apply it. Chair has developed a new type of luxury car seat. The estimated time for the first unit is 12 hours but a learning curve of 75% is expected uh, to apply for the first eight units produced. The cost of labour is $15 per hour. The cost of materials and other variable overheads uh, is expected in total to be $230 per unit. Our chair plans on pricing the seat by adding 50% markup to the total variable cost per seat with the labour cost being based on the incremental time taken to produce the eighth unit. And that's the important bit, the very last bit of the sentence. Uh, we need to be able to do our costings, you know, we'll get the variable costs, we'll add on 50%, but we're basing the labour cost on the time taken to produce the eighth unit. So how are we going to get the time for the eighth? Because once we've got that, I think it's going to be um, pretty easy, pretty quick. Well, remember we're learning, you can never find the time for any one unit directly. The time it takes for the eighth unit, we are able using learning to work out the total time to produce eight units in total. So it is in a minute, but we can work out how long it will take to make eight units. Uh, we can also work out the total time it will take to make seven units. We can work out the total time for any number of units. I'll remind you how in a minute. But if I know how long it takes to make seven, if I know how long it takes to make eight, well, the time for the eighth unit will be the difference between the two. Let's see if we can do it and um, make sure you're clear as to why. Um, to work out the total time for, any, uh, for, for uh, any number of units, first of all for eight units, uh, what we're able to calculate using the formula is the average time per unit. The total time is eight times the average time per unit. And how can we work out the average time per unit? Well, you've got the formula on the formula sheet that y, which is the average time we're after, is ax to the power b. And thankfully, uh, you don't need to learn what the symbols mean because you're told. But a is the time for the first unit, which in this question, first unit is 12 hours. X is the number of units, well we're working out the average time if we make 8, so X is 8, to the power B. And although on the formula sheet it tells you B is log learning rate over log 2, um, you've always been told in paper F5 what B is. You're told it's minus 0.415 in this question. So I then say, don't waste time checking it. If the examiner says it's minus 0.415, it is minus 
Uh, it's then really down to calculator work. Uh, in the lecture on learning curves, um, I explain how on my calculator I work out something to the power minus 0.415. But do remember, the minus, it always will be minus, and the minus does matter. It makes a huge difference. Um, here, if I clear my memory, here I have to go at 8. Uh, I've then got a button. Uh, if I, I can't find x to the power y. I put 0.415, but then I press the plus minus button to make it negative. I get 0.4219, whatever. Uh, I wouldn't write all that down in the exam, keep it in your calculator, but multiply it by 12, and I get 5.06289. People get very worried about how much. Um, how far to round it? Uh, don't worry, I mean, leave a few decimal places. Uh, two or three would be quite sufficient, to be honest. Um, you don't lose marks uh, for rounding. And so, that, remember, is the average time per unit if we make eight. And so, going back to my table, the total time for eight, if on average it's five um, hours, the total will be eight times that. And so the total time for eight units is 40.50, obviously we need three places there, 40.503. Well, that's how long it takes in total to make eight. Uh, as I explained before, we need to know the total time to make the first seven. So that will be seven times the average time again. So we're going to have to use the formula again. Uh, what's the average time if we make seven units? Well, A, the time for the first was 12. X this time is 7 to the power minus 0.415. And here I will do it all on my calculator. That's, I'll do the, the last bit first. 7 to the power 0.415 negative equals, I get 0.4459 something. Uh, multiply by 12, I get 5.35138. But remember, that's the average time per unit if we make 7. So the total time for 7 is 7 times that. Which means the first 7 will take. Thirty-seven point four six hours, and therefore, if the first seven take thirty-seven hours, if the first eight take forty hours, the time for the eighth unit is the difference of I hope somebody's checking me that um, two point zero four three hours. And I've already realised I made a mistake. But you took me like four to thirty-seven. Sorry, three point zero four three hours. Why have we done all that? It's because we're asked to um, calculate the price to charge for this new seat, and it said we were going to base it on the time taken to produce the eighth seat. So now let's do our costings. Um, the cost of materials and other variable overheads is 230 per unit. The cost of the labour, well, we just worked out the time for the eighth seat, which is what we're using, is 3.043 hours. The labour cost is 15 per hour. And so, in our costings, we'll bring in labour of uh, 45.645, I think. 
giving a total of 275.645. So that is the cost of a variable cost per seat. Uh, finally, they wanted the price. It says we're going to add on a 50% markup. Uh, and remember, markup is always a percent of the cost. So 50%, 275.645. 50% 137.823. Gives me a selling price. Of four hundred and thirteen point four six eight. Uh, certainly, I'd round my finance uh, to two decimal places. I mean, I would leave it as four thirteen point four seven. Uh, normally, on unit costs, a normal guide is to do it to the nearest cent, uh, and certainly you wouldn't lose marks if it's a rounding there. Alright, that was part A, calculate the, required, uh, the, the price we expect to charge. Part B, uh, requirement one, calculate the actual rate of learning and state whether this means that the labour force has actually learnt more or less quickly than expected. It says the first phase of production has now been completed for the new car seat. The first unit actually took 12 and a half hours to make. And the total time for the first eight was 34.3 hours. At which point the learning effect came to an end. So we were getting faster and faster as we made more and more, but once we've made eight, it says we're going to stop becoming any faster. Uh, and number one says calculate the actual rate of learning. Well, here, uh, don't use the formula. I mean, you can, but it's going to be awfully messy and you'll never, ever need to use the formula uh, if she asks for calculating the actual rate of learning as she has here. Um, because it's really testing you on the doubling rule. You should know, and if you don't, you must go back to the lecture. You must. But the way learning works, if the learning rate is, say, x, because that's what we're trying to calculate here, the way it works, you make one unit, uh, the average time for that unit here is 12 and a half hours. Learning says if you double, so if you make an extra one and you're now making two units in total, then the average time per unit will be whatever the previous average was, 12 and a half, times the learning rate, which is what we're trying to find out, which is x. And again, if you double again, so if we make another two, we're now up to four. Well, the average time per unit, again, will fall. It'll be whatever it was before, 12 and a half times x, for multiple of x again, times x squared. And every time you double, the average time you multiply by the learning rate. So double again, another four brings us up to eight. The average time, multiply by x again, that would be the average time per unit. However, remember, that is the average time per unit if we make 8. The total time, think back to what we did in part A. If you're making 8, and on average they're taking that long each, total time will be 8 times that. So 8 times 12.5 times x cubed is 100 times x cubed. x, remember, is the learning rate that we're after. Well, we know what the total time for 8 is. 
the, uh, the question tells us the total time for 8 is 34.3 hours. So 100 x cubed is 34.3. Dividing both sides by 100, x cubed is 34.3 over 100, which is 0.343. And finally, for the calculation bit, x is the, square, uh, the cubed root of 0.343. And I'll say at uh, various places in the lectures, you must have a calculator that can, um, a scientific that can do cubed roots. 0.343, the cubed root, comes to 0.7. And so the learning rate is 0.7 or you can express it either way, 70%. So that's the arithmetic, and I'm sorry, it takes me a while to speak, to explain, I'm trying to explain. It's actually pretty quick to do once you know what you're doing. But that's not the whole question. It says calculate the extra rate of learning. Boom, boom, we've got that bit. State whether it means that the labour force actually learnt more quickly or less quickly than expected. Now, a lot of people get this wrong and then kick themselves. You see, in part uh, A, we were expecting it to be 75%. It turns out the rate of learning was 70%. And of course, it's very tempting to say, oh, lower percentage is bad, but not here. Surely, think about what I did a minute ago. If the rate of learning was 100%, you'd never get any faster. It would stay at 12 and a half each time. But the lower the percent, the lower the learning rate, 12 and a half times 0.7 or 12 and a half times 0.6, 12 and a half times 0.5, the lower the learning rate the faster they're actually working. And so, are they learning more quickly or less quickly? Well, at 70% instead of 75, they're actually learning more quickly. Uh, finally, that was uh, B part one. Finally, B part two. Briefly explain whether the adjusted price charged by chair will be higher or lower than the price you calculated in part A above. Now, it doesn't want us to recalculate, but let's look back. We did it above using a learning rate of 75%. And we went out there for uh, that uh, number eight, which is what we're basing the price on, number eight would take 3.043 hours. It now turns out the actual rate of learning is lower at 70%. And I just said, it's actually repeating part one, but if it's only 70%, it means they're learning faster. It means the eighth one will take less time and if the eighth one takes less time to make because they're learning faster, you know, if it only took 2.9 hours or something, that'll make the cost lower. And if the cost is lower and we carry on adding the markup in the same way, it would make the price lower. The adjusted price will be lower. So there we are. And I don't know, a tiny bit unfair because uh, the written bit in part B1 and B2 are actually testing the same thing. Uh, you don't lose marks twice, so if you'd have got B part 1 wrong and said, instead of saying um, uh, they're learning more quickly, you said they're learning less quickly. Well, you'd lose marks there. B part 2, though, if they're learning less quickly, they just do price would be higher. Well, fine, you get two marks for part two for making the right statement that follows on from what you'd said in B1. Anyway, there's the correct answer. They're learning faster. As a result, the eighth will be quicker and the price will be lower.